Well, my sound was not off, guys, so apparently someone doesn't like me on Facebook Live anymore. Oh, well, guess what that's going to do? Not going to stop me, that's for sure. All right, well, today we have our guest from Restoring Families Internet Radio Station, Brian Lee, who will be talking about the Nancy, Senator Nancy Schaefer event, and we will go back to that um, uh, video again today because we will get this message out to you in full context. Um, so without further ado, though, I would like to in, uh, welcome my guest today, Brian Lee. Hello, Brian. Hello. How are you doing? Oh, doing well. We I guess we need to show the rest of that eventually. <laughs> I noticed that it doesn't happen unless I'm going live. It's quite interesting, Brian. <laughs> you know, there's so much things about technology that are great, but there's a lot of it that is like, are you serious? So <laughs> it's totally understandable, especially when you're dealing with an internet that constantly wants to buffer time and time again. So that's what it seemed like it was doing. It was just buffering. <laughs> ah, so, so Brian, uh, first of all, I appreciate you guys and, and all the work that you guys have been doing for uh, uh, how many years now have you, have you been having the radio show already um, restoring families? Restore Fans, we've been dealing uh, for about a year, year and a half now. So it, literally, we just had our year marked back in uh, September. Oh, wow. That's great. That's great. And I love the name Restoring Families because that's what it's really all about, um, mm -hmm. bringing everybody back together again. That's our main goal. Um, Absolutely. What, what lay the foundation uh, with your own personal story? What, what brought you to this point of advocacy um, work and so on? Well, I'm, I've been fighting the system. Going, it'll be eight years this upcoming March uh, for the best interests of my children as well as all of our children. Because it's not just mine; it's everyone's. Right. And all of our children that are going through this corrupt system are being damaged, and you know, so are the parents. So, uh, when I started this back in 2012, I actually started Truth Exposed, uh, which is based out of Montgomery County, Maryland, and I did that in 2012. This is also right after the mother had physically attacked the kids and I in the circuit court house lobby and that the judge uh gave her the kids and stripped me of all my rights wow so that's when i when i created truth exposed and then after being on several shows on uh blog talk radio uh that i was like you know what let me create my own and i got up with a buddy of mine um jerry prince and we actually created this show restoring families you know just over a year ago Oh, it's wonderful. And I know that you're also, it, first of all, that just, it doesn't surprise me when I hear this and, and, you know, being, you know, doing this type of work, it seems like they just adore when somebody has some sort of domestic violence behind them to give the children to them <laughs> because, you know, they know that that's what's going to keep the fight going. They know that the parent that wants to protect the, the safety of ch their children, you know, the sanctity of the family, they're going to continue to keep fighting. So that's the dollar signs they see. They could care less about the safety of the children. I mean, here you have something that took place in a public forum right in the court. Obviously, there must have been people that saw this attack, mm -hmm. and the judge's remedy oh, was there to... There was. <laughs> there, was that, there was also video evidence, and the judge refused to get a copy of it, to, to view it, uh, refused to listen to any of the witnesses, refused to look at the documentation, because I was actually at the courthouse to see the state's attorney to file charges for abuse, neglect, and endangerment of our children. Huh. And all of a sudden, I get attacked, you know, so it's like, okay, and... Then we go to emergency hearing and they take my rights away? How is that right? Right, right. And the fact that they take your rights away and we know that they are God-given rights and inalienable rights. And all I have to say to that is how dare they. And this is why we there's an uprising 
this is why we are i i mean now i, I literally have people i think i've even shared with you on the last show your show mm -hmm. you know we had we have south africa behind us we have we have hawaii we have canada we have new england we have you know it's just unbelievable the amount of people this is a global epidemic and they're doing this everywhere they're trying to destroy the family that's what it's all about is they're trying to destroy the family and it's just absolutely a well you know you get all these countries behind you i can actually on uh, let me pull it up real quick so i'm actually i'm in my studio as well so <laughs> for when we do our, our our restoring families and that radio show but uh you know we, we have people listening from all over the place literally um argentina you know venezuela uh france united kingdom ireland Germany, uh, Romania, uh, Ukraine, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, India, Thailand, yeah. Indonesia, Australia. It's just countless. Russia, you know, it's countless people watching. Yeah, and I, and I like the idea of getting Russia behind us. What do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if you can't beat them, just get Russia. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so but i but yeah it is it's it's amazing because i think that now the voice has been heard loud and clear it is global um you know bringing everybody to come together um and obviously i have the january 3rd event that like now i thought i wasn't getting sleep before oh my goodness that's all i have to say about that um but it's great and 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 and, and everybody that's watching too guys i'm doing the best i can to get back to you just if we do this together as a group effort and you watch the instructions as we come up with the lives and you just, you know, get the answers from the chapter leaders and uh, kind of follow the instructions as we send them to you. We have to do this together. Brian, there's just way too many of us to literally answer all the mail. I'm sure you get as well individually. Um, I got people constantly, uh, even Angela May as well as Stephen Ball, we're constantly getting messages. Your volume. Your volume. Is that better? Yep, there you go, bud. Okay. Yeah, we're constantly getting messages to bring people on our show and what people got to realize that, you know, there's a process. We don't just bring anybody on to bring people on. Yeah. You know, we're we're a credible source. Yeah. So we want to make sure that we're staying credible, that we're bringing the truth, you know, to these shows. And because and, if we don't, people are not going to listen. They're going to say, oh, well, they're, they're just doing this for attention. No, we're not doing this for attention. We're doing <laughs> it for our children. That's right. Our children are being affected by this the most. That's right. That's right. And nobody does this, honestly. Well, I mean, maybe there are. I don't know. Um, all I know is th this is a lot of hard work. <laughs> this is a lot of hard work. It's blood, sweat, and tears. Um, it is. And it doesn't help when you work two full-time jobs in the process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and this is, and this is a, this is a full-time job, for sure, on its own. Mm -hmm. So, um, so Brian, um, did you want to share a little more about your own personal story? And then I, and I definitely want you to talk about Senator Nancy Schaefer event that you, you guys are doing. Absolutely. Well, again, I start, started this back in 2010. It was actually of March of 2010 uh, when the grandmother, uh, the maternal grandmother, had made accusations to Child Protective Services that I had burned an ashtray that hit my daughter in the, above the left eye, which required stitches. Well, that was just one accusation. The other ones were the house was always filthy and that there was no food in the house. Well, they could not get me on the three accusations. Well, one, because it was a non-smoking home, so where was this ashtray? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Two, okay, they, people come over to our house during the day. If there's toys all over the living room. Hello, they're kids. They're going to play. Right. You know, and three, you know, I had documentation showing that every month on the 1st, when I was getting my government, you know, uh, housing allowance from the military, from the VA, uh, mm -hmm. because I was going to school full time that I was spending 300 to 400 dollars a month at Sam's Club and if anybody knows what Sam's Club can you buy in bulk yes so they could not get me on those three accusations and it was unfounded so they went fishing and started using my military service against me oh because my of my combat experience they're saying well you got PTSD well I got tested twice by the VA hospital to come back inconclusive for my combat experience I do have a form of PTSD it's called dealing with the family courts and CPS oh absolutely and there's nothing wrong with PTSD matter of fact I don't, are you aware that they actually changed it to a syndrome rather than a diagnosis because it's not yes, a do. mental illness I say this all the time you have every right to be upset you have every right to have a righteous indignation slash anger towards what they're doing to your families listen you you pull a child away from a loving parent and you tell them not to bleed or cry or be angry or hurt that's insanity 
It's it's uh, utter abuse, utter abuse. So you know, so yeah, uh, you know they they use that against me, and then they turn the mother against me. We were actually fighting together. Oh wow! To get them back. Um, at the first proceeding, not not the preliminary hearing, when you're just sitting there with a the mediator and you're talking, you know, I could tell that she started to turn on me then, but it wasn't fully. You know, um, our friends and our neighbors who knew about the situation were helping and and trying to you know help us get our kids back. But at the very first hearing, um, you know, the, the the original caseworker, their attorney, the the maternal grandmother and the maternal grandfather, they all met with the mother separately. And of course, I can already see it on her face. They're turning her against me. Oh, yeah. And of course, they coerced her. They told her that if you did not do what we said, if you did not say this, you'll never see your kids again. Mm -hmm. Right then and there, I knew that she had turned against me. Mm -hmm. And everybody that was there, our neighbors, my our closest friends that were there to, to fight with us, you know, they saw it too, and they knew it. Mm -hmm. I had lost before I even walked into that courtroom. Yep, yep. Uh, she started saying that she was afraid of me, that I have abused her. When I got record showing, and if you look up Maryland Judicial Case Search and then just type in, you know, the mother's name, you will see all the charges I have placed on her for assault. But I wound up dropping them, you know, because she was in a bad way. Yeah. But it wasn't my choice to drop them. It was the, the, the judges, because we all know that if, if the police see physical bruising, they have to press charges no matter what, even if we tell them we don't want to. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, I called the police because I wanted her to calm down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. But I got all these, you know, uh, assault charges. Uh, uh, her her brother, uh, the kid's uncle, has got drug possession, condom robberies. And, you know, so I've been threatened by members of, of her and her family. Mm -hmm. um, back uh, in 2013, uh, the mother violated the protection order, that uh, the cross protection order that we had against each other. She had one against me and I had one against her. Well, she violated coming over to my neighborhood to slash my tires and egg my house. Wow. Oh, my gosh. You know, I found out from an informant that she was going to be doing this. So I immediately contacted my police buddies, you know, because mm -hmm. I was still in law prevention at the time. I knew all the officers in, in the districts. And so I called them to, like, get off the phone with us, call 911. We're on our way because they already knew where I lived. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they wound up catching the mother in the vehicle that she was coming over in with the knife in hand and the eggs in her pocket. Oh, her my gosh. Yeah. So she was arrested. Two weeks later, I'm getting a knock at the door from the sheriff's department serving me papers for violation of the protection order. I'm like, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, turns out uh, a few days after the mother was arrested, I was walking home from the bus stop because I don't have a vehicle anymore. And this, this happened in April, okay? So um, April 1st would be exact when this, when this incident took place that I was walking home from the bus stop after getting off work around 10 o'clock at night, walking past the right time medical clinic, which is in the shopping center that I live behind. And I go right through the shopping center to get to my home because it's the quickest way to get there. Well, as I'm walking past the right time clinic, I hear a voice going, daddy, daddy, hi, daddy. And I turn around, it was my son. And of oh. course, I'm not supposed to be anywhere near them. Oh, God. Because uh, her protective order had the kids added to it. And right. this is all because of the attack that she did in the courthouse lobby. I've, I've been there so many times, Brian, that you're preaching to the choir. Like, I get it 100%. I know it. I, I could read you the fine print on those orders without looking at it. It's insane. It's insane. It, the whole system is crazy. Crazy. They protect the, the, they protect domestic violence, and they they leave children and families unprotected completely. It's, it's sickening. Sickening. So, yeah, you know, we're, we're going on. And like I said, I get the knock at the door to share the phone. You need to go to court to get formally charged by the judge. I was like, all right. So I'll go to court. And about three weeks later, um, I was supposed to, and that we're going to be going for the charges for the mother violation of protection order. So when the judge asked me, um, what, am I pleading guilty or not guilty? I said, I'm pleading not guilty. This is a direct retaliation from having her arrested for violation of protection order when she attempted to egg my house right. and slash my tires. Right. You know, so the judge is like, wait a minute, do you have that order with you? And handed it right to him. I said, here you go, Your Honor. He looked at it. He goes, uh, well, what do you want to do? I said, I want my case heard the same exact day as the mother's. Mm -hmm. And the judge granted it. Good. And so the mother's case was heard in the morning uh, that day. And I'm sitting in the back of the courtroom. I got friends with me because I don't trust her and I don't trust her father. 
I don't trust anybody that deals with her. Yeah, and, I hear you. But she was found guilty, put on two years probation, and had to pay a fine. Uh, my case wasn't heard until the very end. I was the last case to be called up. Okay. And the judge was like, wait a minute, didn't we just deal with this individual, you know, earlier today? And my attorney was like, yes, you did, Your Honor. And he goes, and just flipping through the pages, and he's just like, okay, let's just get through this. Well, to get the grandfather up on the stand, and he's lying off his ass, uh, literally stating that, you know, I stood in front behind his car until after he got the kids buckled in and and drove off. Well, if I'm behind his car, how is he going to back out and drive off? <laughs> Two. So this, is supposed, this is supposed to have happened in your driveway. No, this has happened in front of the right time medical clinic. Okay. And he was he was parked faced end where you had to back out in order to go down. Got, got it. Okay. To get out. So yeah, you know, but he lied off his ass on the stand, and you know, my attorney was able to just question him, called him several lies. Good. And then I was brought up, and I had the map of the area where all the bus stops were, the routes that I could take, and the the main route, which is the quickest route to get to my home, which is behind the uh, shopping center. And so we also had my uh, the time that I got off work to the time I got on the bus to the time I got off the bus and to the time I would walk past the right time clinic at the time. I just happened to be at the wrong spot at the wrong time. <laughs> uh, it happens. Yeah. You know, it's a right time medical clinic. How do I know <laughs> that my kids are going to be there? There was no way for me to know because I had no communication. I have no communication. What no communication with one, the grandfather or two, the mother. Right, right, right. So how was I supposed to know they were there? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And but the, you know the judge asked me a few questions and then turned around at the state's attorney and at the grandfather. It's like how dare you sit there and try to have this father charged? And how dare you, state's attorney, for even trying this case? Right. You know, and for any parent not to acknowledge their child is it, out of disrespect for that child. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't stay around. And I also had video from the, the, the right time clinic because they actually had cameras on the outside. And I actually had that video. You can clearly see me walking past this clinic, turned around, acknowledging my son and kept on walking. Right, right. So that was just half of the stuff that I've had to deal with. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had to deal with the mother uh, physically abusing my children in the rehab center, oh. a drug rehab center. You know, th this is the second case, Senna case that we've been in. And, and Senna, for those that don't know, in Maryland, it's child in need of assistance. Mm -hmm. So the first case was ended in November of 2012. And then it was reopened again in March of uh, 2013. And that's, and that's right before the mother violated the protection order because uh, she actually had the kids taken from her because of her drug use. It's unbelievable. So they're with her now? They're still with her now, yes. And when's the last time you've seen them, and how often do you see them? Um, it's been five years. It'll be five years this upcoming March since I've seen my kids. At all? At all. I am so sorry. But it, it's an, I'm never, never. I'm never giving up. I'm never quitting. No, you're not. I fight for my kids. Uh, uh, well, history is bound to repeat itself. And, you know, and, and, and to go back just a little bit, um, in, in 2013, December of 2013, December 14th to be exact, she physically abused the kids in the rehab center. She put her hands around my son's neck and slapped my daughter across the face and so hard that it left bruises on both the kids. And there's written documentation from the rehab staff that yeah. this occurred. Unbelievable. And also, you know, direct wording from my son and daughter. So where's CPS in all of this? Child Predator Services. They, they've been involved for going on eight years. Like well, said, because they, they love this so much, they embrace the abusers so much, you know, there they are, child predator services. I mean, I think that, I yeah. think that they're, I don't know why they haven't changed their signs over. I'm trying to tell them their name is not protective. It's predator. I, I, I don't understand. I mean, they need to get back in and go do a new, you know, doing business as and change their name right away, right away. <laughs> well, after, after she abused the kids in the rehab center, of course, my attorney and I, and at the time I had a, I have a public defender, yeah. Uh, because they don't do crap. No. They, well, they do. They do. No, no, no. They do. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. They work for the court to cause you a living hell of a life and destroy your children. Yeah. <laughs> That's why well, they're pretenders. It, it, it's kind of funny. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll get to that part here in a second. But we have filed for an emergency petition for an emergency hearing uh, in order to get the kids away from her when she abused the kids in the rehab center. The judge granted it. They did. 
Two and a half months later, she's having overnights and weekly visits again in the rehab center. Unbelievable. I I can't. <laughs> but yet, I don't do drugs. I don't have a criminal history. I got, what, a few speeding tickets mm -hmm. you know, on my record. Oh, whoop you do mm -hmm. you know, But who doesn't? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, I don't do drugs again. I don't have a criminal record. You know, but yet I'm crazy. Yeah. I'm a lunatic because I speak out, because I act out, because of the abuse that, the one, the mother has done, and two, that the department allows her to do and get away with it. It's like taking that rug, lifting it up, taking the broom, and right up underneath. I am so glad you're telling this story, and, and this is why I try to bring, I think I, I think I bring a fair amount of mothers and fathers on the stage, on the platform, so to speak, telling these stories because they're all the same. It's always in the best interest of domestic violence, always. <laughs> never in the best interest of children and families. Never never safeguarding families. Never upholding the integrity of family. I, I'm a firm believer that even though she's the mother and she's definitely effed up, there's no other way to put it. Okay, they're, they're, in a civilized, we're the 21st century, we should be able to work with her to the level of what she is capable of being worked with. Meaning... Well, the, the, not, that's the thing. Well, I mean... She's doing everything she can to get everything handed to her. Right. Not, not, she's not being helped. She's not being helped in any way to change her life or make a better life for those children. Meanwhile, you're being... So, so my point is, is that, um, you know, because we talk about the term alienation and we're very... You know, we define that term. We define it. We define it because it can't be, it can't be taken out completely of the equation because it's true. People are being alienated. Children are grandparents, our aunts, uncles, extended family, friends, you know, school kids, so on and so forth from these children. And, but we should be able to, in the 21st century, as a civilized people, be able to work with people and safeguard children from them when they're a blood parent, instead of giving them into foster care where they're being abused and killed, taking them from an entire family. You know, my whole goal is to see families stay together, blood families, biological families stay together. Enough of this child trafficking into selling our children into adoption, which is completely the biggest lie or fraud that the world has ever known. We, we've exposed that. But working with the families that are workable, like, like a mother like this, if she's workable, because a lot of times they don't even admit they have a problem, so they're never going to be workable, never, but keeping the, the sanctity of the family together as best as possible and always, always keeping them with a fit parent, always, oh, always. Absolutely. But we're not seeing that, Brian. We're not seeing that at all. We're seeing the complete extreme opposite, and it's neither male nor female. It's, it, it has no... Uh, dis like, in other words, the abuse is, um, it doesn't discriminate. It doesn't matter who you are. It's not a mother's problem. It's not a father's problem. And that's why we show equal stories. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Well, absolutely. And, and, and yes, we do talk about parental alienation because that is a huge factor in all this. Because this one, one parent uses the child as a weapon and, you know, they talk in front of the children about the other parent. You know, they bash the other parent. They tell lies about the other parent, etc. And these children are hearing this, and this is the reason why a lot of these children do not want to have a relationship with the alienating parent. Yeah. And, you know, I've, right. I've been dealing with that. But luckily, you know, my parents in Virginia, they get the kids uh, one week at a month. Oh, wow. And, oh, yeah. And they show them pictures, videos, you know, from my childhood. And, you know, just so they know who I am. So they, you know, so they don't oh. ever forget me. And God bless my parents for doing that. I, I love them dearly for that. Oh, but. Man. It's like when the kids are with their mother. Now, I'm supposed to get phone contacts every Saturday and Sunday uh, and for, for the last four years. Well, when my son would call me like clockwork, my daughter would never talk to me on the phone in front of her mom. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, my mom has asked her, you know, why don't you want to talk to daddy at mom's? And she goes, because I'm afraid. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and That's what horrible. What could she be afraid of? Well, right. Afraid of being punished, afraid of, you know, whatever. Right. And it, it scares they me all that say my the same. daughter would not want to speak to me in front of her mom. Well, I, I just recently at the last court hearing uh, two months ago have been, been granted to do Skype sessions. So I haven't seen them on video. I just haven't physically been with them. Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, for the last going on five years, the only thing that the judge has wanted me to do was to seek therapy. And I'm like, therapy for what? I've already done therapy for you three other times. But he's, but he's, keeping, he's keeping the children with somebody who is clearly unfit, clearly un well, she, unstable, she, clearly a danger and a risk to the children. I mean, that, that's obvious. I mean, when, you have, when you're beating up kids and you're doing drugs in front of children, that's, you know, to answer, somebody just asked who, what determines a fit parent. 
Well, I'll tell you what determines an unfit parent. How's that? Um, and that we, you, I think you just explained that pretty clearly. That is not safe. It is not healthy. Um, and we would like to see them safeguarded at least. I wouldn't say t I don't I don't like taking a parent out of a child's life at all. Honestly, I don't think anybody does. I don't think. But this is not healthy, and it doesn't and it doesn't help them. And I tell you what, whenever my daughter and son go to Virginia uh, with my parents, uh, literally, my daughter's like, can I call daddy? Can I call daddy? All the time. Of course. You won't, won't do that in the presence of a mom. Right. I mean, I've, and I know that dynamic completely. I understand the whole thing. And, and I've been there. <laughs> it, it, it hurts me inside. It's like a, a dagger going in my chest when I can't talk to my, when I can't even speak to my daughter right. on days that I'm supposed to be able to talk to her. Right. It's heartbreaking. And, yeah, but the, the whole thing is, it's affecting her the most. It's affecting my son the most. It's affecting mm -hmm. all of our children in the worst ways. Long-term effects. People don't even understand how bad. So many, yeah. So, but, you know, I just recently, I decided to, I guess you could say, comply with the court's order and to do the therapy. Of course, I'm doing it, you know, against my will, under duress. Well, let, let, you know, Brian, use it against them, though. Get those get those 100 percent marks on it well, and sue the hell out of them after with with your what they've held you back from. You know, I mean, come on. You know, this is this is what we need. Well, this is why we need to continue to build this army, because everybody doing the same thing, marching to the same beat, so to speak. Parents, mothers, fathers working together and suing the living crap out of these piece of craps that they are, because it's them that need to be held accountable, period, right. for destroying well, what you are exactly right, I mean, and, and that's something that my go attorney, after I, have a, I have a private attorney now, and I've had this private attorney for the last uh three three and a half years now. Mm -hmm. Uh, fight this case, and unfortunately, there's really not much he can do in the Senate case uh. besides play catch up mm -hmm. and play defense mode. And the one thing that he's always asked me to do is give him some ammunition to bring to court. Mm -hmm. Meaning, just comply with the court's order. You could do it against your will. You could say you're doing it on right, the but just do it so to I bring it on record. Just do it so it can be on the record, and we can get you back with your kids. Yes. Well, I had the first session three weeks ago. I had a second session, and now for the last few weeks, I haven't seen this therapist because now they're having an issue with the payment, saying that I have to pay for it when it's supposed to be the department. It's like I'm not paying for this. If I have to pay for it, I ain't coming back. Right. You know, this is being ordered by the judge under the direction of the Department of Child Protective Services. They need to pay for this. I am doing this to satisfy the court's needs. There I'm you not go. paying for it. There you go. You know, so, and, and I would put everything in writing, and I actually tell people, you put it in writing. I'm not signing this as you're stating it this way. I'm signing it as me stating it this way, you know, and then sign it with a, sign it with a notary. I, I made it known that I'm doing this just to satisfy the court's needs. Yeah, exactly. Always, always articulate your words in writing, though, with a notary. Articulate always. your words. It is. Always. Because then they cannot use it against you later when you go to sue them. Mm -hmm. Okay? When you go to sue them federally. When you go to sue them based on your constitution. Okay? Because right. all these rights are violated. Anybody that's watching that knows real law, <laughs> your, your rights have been massively violated. Massively violated. And then there's a penal code in every single state called endangering the welfare of a child. Okay, so they're violating that too <laughs> mm -hmm. by rendering well, these decisions that place them in harm's way and high risk. Well, I, I am going to be filing a federal lawsuit um, as soon as the Senate case is done. And I'm hoping, uh, because of me complying with the court order, orders now and seeing this therapist, we're hoping that my visits will get reinstated with the children so I can physically be with them again. Yeah. And, um, once the case closes out, we can take it further because then we can actually take it to family court and, yeah. and deal with it that way. Because everything that's happened over the last eight years, we can't rehash. You know, they, they're not going to look back at it. But when we go to family court, you know, everything that's happened over the eight years of the physical attacks, the threats, the constant lying, the bashing, the, the parental alienation, the um, uh, the attack in the courthouse lobby, the violation of the protection, or all that stuff can bring be brought back up, and you know, in this court proceeding, you know, in, yeah. in the family court system, uh, to where I can actually fight in order to get my kids back permanently. That would be great. That would be wonderful. And we pray for that. So, Brian, let's talk a little bit about this, the Nancy Schaefer event you have coming up, and the dates and where people can actually donate and why that's so important. Absolutely. I'm actually, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to post it right now uh, up on the uh, the live feed that we're doing on Facebook. I'm posting it right now. 
Uh, come on, there it goes. Just post it right there. It's long. It's even got the link to the event uh, down at the very bottom. I'm also going to post, and this is the third annual Nancy Schaefer Rally, which is going to be held in D.C. on March 26, 2018. It's going to happen along the National Mall this year instead of at the Capitol building where we've had it the last two years. We're limited to what we can have there as far as like staging and canopies and generators, etc. So uh, what we're going to be doing along the National Mall where all that stuff can be brought to this event. I'm also going to uh, post another link, which is trying to the find it myself. booster uh, link. Is it also on restoring families and as well, uh, Brian? Because I'm just it trying is. to find it as well. Um, sorry, I'm getting a freezing up here. <laughs> but we'll it, it is. It, all this is posted to both restoring families internet radio as well as Truth Exposed. Okay. So, like I said, I just posted it in the comment link. So, if people want to go and okay. donate or purchase a shirt, the shirts are $20. They're very nice. Um, I actually have mine. Mine's on the way as we speak. And several other people have already ordered theirs as well. Yeah, I ordered one. I got one so far. <laughs> yeah, I saw that yesterday. Thank you for the hefty donation as well. Uh, you're welcome. So, yeah. So, you can also donate to like I said, the shirts are $20. And you can donate more if you wish. Uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to raise $5,000 in order to get a stage uh, an actual very nice stage. It's, it's got uh, the skirt that goes around it. It's got the um, the railings that go around the back. Great things for any event that the Family Law Movement does or uh, other organizations want to use. And it's not just going to be used for Truth Exposed or Restoring Families. It's going to be used for any uh, group out there that wants to uh, use the equipment. So it's better to have the equipment all in one generalized location because uh, uh, webs. You know, over the last couple of years that I've been doing it, people have been bringing pieces of equipment, like generators and canopies and stuff like that. And what, what happens if somebody can't bring that generator? Right? Something happens to right. them and they can't attend. Right. So if we if we can get all the equipment where you know we can have in one generalized area and that we can bring to Maryland, D.C., or Virginia for any event that we do for Family Law Reform, then that would be a better use of our time. And, it's, and we're not renting. We're actually purchasing Right, you know, which is better. Which is a lot better. Mm -hmm. So we, we need the public's help. We, we need the people's help in order to raise this money to get this equipment. The, the stage itself is roughly about $3,000. Generators, uh, mm -hmm. a couple, like, like $250, 400 bucks. Uh, some new canopies, about maybe like $50 a piece. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're trying to be uniformity here. We're trying to make this look uh, really legit, you know, yes. uh, very professional. Mm-hmm. So, but like, it, like I said, we need the people's help to do this. And of course, the Nancy Schaefer rally, yes. for those who don't know who Nancy Schaefer is, she was a former Georgia senator who lost her seat because of her activism. But mm -hmm. on November, I'm sorry, on March 26, 2010, her and her husband were drastically murdered mm -hmm. by the very system that she was exposing. She was creating a documentary as well as a book, writing a book that was never finished or published because of her death. Mm -hmm. uh, Believe it or not, three days uh, before uh, March 26th, I'm sorry, three days after March 26th of 2010, she was supposed to be speaking on the lawn of the Capitol building. Mm -hmm. now, a lot of people don't know that. Right. The, she was going to be talking about the family law reform, yes, the she... alienation, and the, the, the money factor that comes along with Title 4D and Title 4E. So, you know, we live in her legacy. What, what she did, we today live in her legacy. We're, we're continuing her work. Mm-hmm. That's right. She's the forerunner. And Judge Scalia also, he suddenly, you know, died <laughs> suddenly. Um, and he was talking about all our constitutional rights, which are so clear, so clear, um, that are being violated. And uh, so... Um, just for just for the sake of those that are watching, and I just see more people pop on, just to give the date for that event one more time. Uh, it's March, yeah, March twenty sixth from nine a.m. until five p.m. We're not given the direct location at this time for security purposes. Okay. Because, uh, we know that there's a couple organizations out there, um, including some of the feminist groups out there, mm -hmm. who um, have been attacking the family law reform movement in the in the fifty fifty uh, uh, equal shared parenting. Uh, that's been going on uh, that we're that we're all pushing for the grandmothers the grandfathers the yes. uncles, moms and dads etc 
So um, we're keeping the, the actual location a secret at this time, but it's going to be somewhere along the National Mall, I will tell you that. So are they showing up with body parts on their heads? or? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know, and I'll tell you what, that, that, that right there just it, it kicks the bucket with me. When they're sitting there wearing a costume of uh, part of my French, but a pussy. Are, are you serious? Yeah. You, you feminism? Oh, and you know the the thing that the thing is, um, I'm actually trying to find a picture of Nancy, and I, I I'm getting the wrong. Um, if you actually pan your camera um, to the left a little bit, I actually got a picture. I you have it, but it's coming up very dark, so I'm trying to just get one shot of it. I'll get I'll get it right now. Just give me a second. This is just talking about her. Um, I have it right here. Here she is, Senator Nancy Schaefer. Yeah, I live by her legacy every day. Everything she spoke of, I speak every day. You know, I've I've, I've played multi any event that I do. I always share her YouTube videos. She's got a lot of them out there. She's even did one with um, Alex Jones. Uh, mm -hmm. She's done one at a uh, symposium. Uh, and she's done a couple other interviews as well. And all you gotta do is go to. Um, Go on to um, YouTube and just type in Nancy Schaefer. Boom. And oh, yeah. And you, you definitely want to listen to her because the way she speaks, and this is a real American hero. It says here, Senator Nancy Schaefer, June 28, 1936, uh, died on 326 2010 And she talks about the corrupt business of child protective services. I believe child protective services nationwide has become corrupt and that the entire system is broken, almost beyond repair. I am convinced parents and families should be warned of the dangers, Nancy Schaefer. Now, um, that's a, now just leading to, um, just finalize here. Um, so the event that we're doing on January 3rd, 2018, um, which has now become a global event, um, we are shutting it down because they're not listening. And we're getting a, lots of nice little breakthroughs here and there, but it's not enough. Too many children are dying. We're going to be telling another story now of another mom who's no longer with us, uh, Shannon. Shannon, we're going to be telling her story at one o'clock today, a little bit after one. Um, uh, so, in, in you know, in honor of Senator Nancy Schaefer, in honor of this mother, Shannon, in honor of all the murdered children, in honor of all the suicide victims, mothers and fathers, um, in honor of all the abused children, everyone, everyone, everywhere should not be making any purchases. It's a citizen's arrest day. We are arresting. We are in, in solidarity uh, to the to just just a moment of silence for a 24-hour period. We will not be, what would a world be like without parents? Well, you wouldn't be at work. You wouldn't have a job. You wouldn't be, you wouldn't be purchasing anything. So that's what we're doing. That's day one. That's January 3rd. No to anyone who thinks they'll be arrested for not buying gas. No, that's not what's going to happen. <laughs> you will not be arrested for not making purchases. That is not the citizen's arrest. The citizen's arrest will be happening after that, after that. The actual citizens arrest the actual, but we are going to pursue our civil liberties. We are going to, we are going to, um, these, these are the things that, 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 are, that we hold dear as a nation, first of all, that veterans fought and bled for. And you took an oath of office, uh, Brian. You took, you took your oath. Um, so we, you know, we have to do this. If we don't do this, Brian, where do you see us in the next 10 years with our families? Uh, if it keeps going down the proverbial hole that it's going down now, um, yeah, goodbye to our family system because the government's going to fully take over. And you're right. I did take a note um, back in 2003. And... I have never been part of the group at that oath. I will continue to defend the Constitution from foreign and domestic. There you, you go. Know, and right now, we're dealing with the domestic terrorist, which is our own government. Yes, that's right. So, Brian, what will you not be doing on January 3rd? <laughs> I will not be buying. I will not be purchasing. I will not be watching TV. Hell, I won't even be on Facebook that day. I'm turning off my phone for a day. <laughs> and we will be standing out in different locations, though, um, trumping the message, showing the faces of the corrupt judges, the corrupt child predator service case workers. You know, people will be doing things like that, uh, singing Kumbaya, you know, all that good stuff. We will be doing that. Uh, to draw as much mass attention as possible, but we will be making no purchases. So don't even cross bridges if you have to pay tolls. Stick close to home, you know, stick to your local courthouses or wherever um, as far as that goes. But um, And we do want bands out there. We want musicians out there. We want drummers. We want 
artists, you know, painting, uh, handing out. We got, we got all different kinds of things that people are doing all over the nation. We are looking for more chapter leaders to, to, to lead um, up until the event itself, and we are in Anything Goes right now. So basically, all your creative, get your, all your creative juices flowing, because whatever you're good at, you do it that way. You don't have to ask me for permission unless you're, you know, you want to bomb somebody. I will not allow that. Okay, that's not coming under our umbrella. But anything that you possibly could and, do and want to do, uh, please go ahead and do it. We've appointed tons of chapter leaders, and we're still going strong with that. Um, and that is worldwide, guys, worldwide. So we are open. Um, you don't have to ask my permission to breathe in and out. Do, do whatever it takes to get the job done. As we do this, um, we are not going to tolerate this oppression. And yes, Leanne, slavery any longer. That's right. That's right, guys. It's done. It's done. So, Brian, I really appreciated your interview today. Thank you so much for all your hard work and all you're doing. Uh, I wish you the very best. I hope and pray that you get the full 5,000. So, guys, please go ahead and donate to that event. Um, we're all in this together. I, I will tell you this. Um, if we get 250 people just to donate $20, that's $5,000 right there, ladies and gentlemen. Just yeah. $20 from 250 people. Yeah, so guys, go ahead and do that, you know, and it really, literally, if you guys can do that, it, it, we'll probably have a thousand views on here in no time. It doesn't take much of you, God, even if each of you did $5 out of, out of a thousand views, you guys are, you know, it, you're helping the most important cause here. So, you know, please go ahead and do it, and uh, we do appreciate that. So, and, and just to reiterate, all the equipment that we plan on getting is not just for restoring families for Truth Exposed. It's for any group as far as like the Million Parent March or, or Off Exposed, Mother's Rights, Father's Rights, Grandparents' Rights. Anytime that somebody wants to use this equipment, it will be made available. That's awesome. Thank you. Good. I'll be looking for you too then. <laughs> so, all right, Brian, thank you so much. And everybody, uh, thank you very much. Stay tuned because at one o'clock or shortly after, uh, we're going to be having a, a very sad story and uh, I got to get myself kind of prepared for this one. So, um, yeah. And then after that, um, I'm going to be having another story later on um, in my, in my new studio. So, uh, so yeah, uh, just keep watch today because we're pulling this all together uh, very quickly. So uh, thank you again, Brian. Really appreciate you. And everybody, don't forget to listen to Restoring Families Internet our Radio. Next, our next show will be this up. Will be tomorrow, actually. It's open mic from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And all you got to do is go to our Facebook page, Restoring Families Internet Radio, RFIR, and just click on the link. And really, it, all the links are posted for all of our shows. But tomorrow is open mic. So anybody is welcome to come on um, and talk about anything. It could be about sports, politics, you know, the situation you're about to talk to here at one o'clock. So definitely, you know, anything you want to talk about, just come on. You know, you can always call in onto the show, which is 619-924-985, 619-924-985. And, you know, if you do want to speak, you must press one in order to be able to get on live. We don't just bring anybody on. We do do screening processes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but definitely, you know, our shows are, like I said, Thursdays from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern time and also on Sundays from 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern time. And, you know, and before I actually just end this real quick, um, I see you got the two masks there for anonymous, which we are anonymous. Yeah. Three of them. Yeah. Oh, you got three there. Oh, yeah. I see the dark one now. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. And and that's another thing, guys. They are uh, supporting uh, January third. Um, I've been getting messages as well. Um, so and and just to let everybody know, if you're not clear of who anonymous is, go in the bathroom and take a look. You've got something right above your sink usually. It's called a mirror. All right. Yep. So there we go, guys, all in this together. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for having me on the show. It's definitely been a pleasure, and you're more than welcome on Restoring Families Anytime. All right. I look forward to it. Thank you so much. Bye now. All right. Have a good one. You too.